Oh, hey, do you want to see how to build this shed? To start things off, I made a simple concrete form out of two by fours for the foundation of this shed. I then dug six inches down to allow for a gravel base of about three inches thick. I ended up using almost nine 50 pound bags of gravel for the three by four slab for this shed, and I used a tamp to compact the gravel. Once that's done, I verify the form is sitting level before moving on to the next step. Here I'm wetting the gravel and the form slightly before pouring the concrete, and this helps to prevent the concrete from curing too quickly. To make mixing the concrete easier, I rent an electric concrete mixer for a few hours from my local Home Depot. The Home Depot has rental centers at most of their stores across the country, so you can get the tools you need to complete your project and get back to work quickly. They also rent trucks, so if the materials or tool rentals you need won't fit in your vehicle, you can rent a truck and tackle your next project. I mix the concrete in batches and use a hardback rake to spread it into the form. Once the form is filled halfway, I set a piece of remesh into the concrete and then continue filling the form. I run a shovel around the edges to work the concrete against the form and into the corners. Once the form is full, I use a straight 2x4 as a screed. I run the board back and forth in a sawing motion to evenly distribute the concrete. Right after screeding, I grab a magnesium float and float the surface. Shortly after floating the surface, I grab a steel trowel and put the finishing touches on the slab. To build the shed walls, I first cut all of my 2x4s per my plans. I then lay out the pieces as needed and use 3.5 inch nails to assemble each wall. For the base plate on each wall, I use pressure treated lumber since they'll be sitting on a concrete slab. Before constructing the front wall, I pre-assembled the jack stud and king studs along with the door header. With these pieces made, I finished laying out and assembling the wall per my plans. Back outside of the slab, I set the walls in place and temporarily clamped them together. Once I confirm that everything is close to square, I secure the walls to one another with three and a half inch construction screws. Once the walls are secured to one another, I cut and install the double top plates. At this point, I anchor the walls to the slab. There are several different ways to anchor into concrete, but for this project, I went with Tapcons. Back at the miter saw, I cut three rafters to length and with a proper angle on each end. Using a speed square, I transfer the dimensions from my plans to the rafters and notch the rafters with my jigsaw so they'll sit flat on the top plates. The cut that I'm making is referred to as a bird's mouth. This project is sponsored by my friends at the Home Depot. From versatile buying options, tool rentals, and thousands of how-to videos, the Home Depot has the tools and materials you need to keep building and get more done. Back at the shed, I set the rafters on the top plate just to verify that they fit. For the sheathing on the shed, I used T111 with a 4 inch spacing. I cut the pieces to size in the shop with my track saw, but a standard circular saw or jigsaw will definitely get the job done too if you don't have a track saw. To cut the opening for the door, I laid out the cut lines to give roughly a 3 quarter inch reveal of the door framing. I used the track saw to cut just shy of the corners, and then I grabbed the jigsaw to complete the cuts and this off-cut piece I set aside for later. With all the panels cut, I head back out to the shed and clamp the panels in place before securing them to the framing with two inch nails. You'll see me checking the wall with my level occasionally. After the first nail is driven into a sheet, I check the wall and adjust as necessary to make the wall square. Once the level is plumb, I drive additional nails to fully secure the sheet and I repeat the process until all the walls are sheathed. Now I set one rafter flush with the left and right sides, along with one rafter in the middle, and I secure them with three and a half inch screws. Now I secure the subfascia boards to the end of each rafter. As you see, things got a bit tight on the back of the shed, but thankfully I have a compact driver that saved the day. I use my speed square to set the subfascia boards so that they are in line with the top of the rafters, and I'm using three and a half inch screws to secure them. Sheathing the roof is especially easy on this shed since it takes less than a full sheet of OSB to cover it. I just lift the sheet onto the roof and nail it to the trusses. 
Now some folks like to use a circular saw for this step, but my go-to method to trim excess siding is a flush cutting bit in my router. No need to snap a chalk line, and the router bit follows the profile of the OSB on the roof perfectly. To ensure that the trim board sit flush along the roof line, I cut some scrap pieces to fit around the sides of the roof that aren't yet covered with the sheathing. I nail these pieces into place, and I'm now ready to start trimming out the shed. Around the roof, I used 1x6 hardy trim boards. I put the side boards on first, and then I attached the trim boards to the front and back. For the soffit, I used an offcut from the siding and nailed it to the underside of the roof trusses. To trim out the rest of the shed, I went with 1x3 hardy trim boards. While cement board is a bit more expensive than wood trim, you don't have the same issues of wood rot to deal with over the years, but you will need a cement board specific blade to cut it. The blade I used is by Diablo, and it's linked in the description below. One detail to be aware of when installing these trim boards is to leave about a 1 8 inch gap between each board that will later be caulked. This gap allows for seasonal expansion and contraction of the structure. After double checking the measurements of the door opening, I get started building the door. I cut my 2x4s to length and drill pocket holes where needed. Next, I lay out the pieces and assemble the door frame with 2.5 inch screws. I measure across the corners to make sure the frame is square and then center the panel I saved from the front wall on the door frame and secure it with 1.25 inch screws. To trim out the door, I cut 1x3 trim boards to length and secure them with 2 inch exterior trim screws. The head on these screws is smaller so they don't distract from the pattern on the trim boards as much as a standard screw would. To make installing the door easier, I set a scrap of quarter inch plywood on the shed floor and then I rest the 2x4 door frame on top of it and center the door left to right in the opening. I then install the hinges using 2 inch screws. Next up, I caulk the shed using DAP's Dynaflex caulk. Since this caulk has a one hour cure time before painting, I knocked this out first thing in the morning so that way I could start painting after the roof was shingled. Here I'm making sure to caulk all the gaps I needed to leave between the trim boards, along with screw holes in the front door and between the siding and trim. I run my finger along each bead of caulk to smooth it out and ensure there's a good seal. Installing the drip edge is the first step in finishing the roof. I cut the pieces for the front of the roof first and then fit the side pieces next so that they overlap the top of the front pieces of drip edge. The whole thought process behind applying material while roofing is to layer items as you move higher up the roof. This ensures that rain doesn't run under the shingles, tar paper, or drip edge and potentially damage the structure beneath. With the drip edge complete, I now install the felt paper. Since this roof is small, I cut the pieces to size on the ground and then installed them once up on the roof. I attached the first piece at the front of the roof and then attached the second piece higher up on the roof and overlapped the first piece. Here's a quick shot of how things are looking so far to help explain the process a little bit. To install the shingles, I followed the manufacturer's guidelines. I'll say that regular three-tap shingles are a bit easier to install, but I went with architectural shingles for this project to match the roof on our house. If you've never done any of the aspects of this project, head over to the homedepot.com or the Home Depot mobile app. They have thousands of step-by-step -step videos and articles that will show you how to tackle all kinds of projects. Once all the shingles were installed, I attached the last piece of drip edge on top of the last course of shingles. Before painting, I taped off the drip edge and hinges with blue painter's tape. I used Zinsser 123 Primer and Bare Premium Plus paint. The color we used is Glacial Ice, which is a color by PPG, but we had it color matched at our local Home Depot. Now let's step back and take a look at how this shed turned out. This makes a perfect garden shed because it has lots of vertical storage for garden and yard tools and even has enough space for a lawnmower. For me though, this is where my air compressor will live and now the shop will be a lot quieter. So what would you use a shed like this for? Make sure to let me know in the comments below and if you want to build one for yourself, grab the plans that I have in the description. Ah, oh, you're still there. Awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you right here. And if you want other awesome content from me, check out those. 
Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe. And until next time, have fun making something.